The Teamwork Arts Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we try and go behind the scenes to um, uh, figure out the thoughts that animate the actions of those who make the art. And today, of course, um, uh, a privilege to have uh, Dastan Live with us. Uh, Dastan Live, of course, is an art rock collective. Um, and uh, I am also um, uh, very, very glad to call uh, the people I have with me friends. Uh, there's, of course, Anirban. There's uh, Suman Balakrishnan. And there's uh, Nikhil Vasudevan. Um, uh, we shall forthwith call them Ban. <laughs> Bala and Nick, uh, and uh, this is this is about what makes their music tick. All three of you, um, well, actually, uh, Nikhil, I know has has had a uh, diverse uh, uh, kind of a uh, musical uh, uh, progression, but uh, both of you have have had a, a a very rock progression to your uh, musical journey, and now with Dastan Live, you're actually touching things like um, uh, fairs and majaz and pash, which is Klish, Gur Urdu. Hmm. So, um, what led to this transition? Yeah, so, basically, uh, I was jamming with some of these ideas that I had around, like, that I, like some basic uh, structures that I had made uh, using some of this poetry. And uh, I say some and I say basic ideas because they were still like stuff that Nick and I, we were sort of jamming off and on. And then one day I actually saw Bala like make Nick work for his own project which is Knock Knock and I'm like okay this guy if he can make Nick work then I think I'm clearly jamming with the wrong person <laughs> so I should be jamming on these ideas with Bala and then Nick can join us <laughs> Nick how, you know, how are you comfortable with this narrative <laughs> I mean I don't know you know Nikhil Vasudevan this I have a very different uh, perspective <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, yeah, yeah. Sorry, no. But basically, me and Barn, we used to live together. Okay, <laughs> so me, <laughs> me, Barn, me, Barn, and San, uh, well, Barn's wife and then girlfriend, we Barn. used to live. Yeah, uh, yeah. Partner, partner, partner. partner. <laughs> Correct uh, designation. Sorry, partner. Uh, so we used to live together. So there was there were times when like we would just. We would like, we would be in the same house playing in two different rooms, but never together. Right. And sometimes we would play together, but then we would play for some time, then we would go back <laughs> to our rooms. <laughs> and outside of that house also, we were always playing together because we were together in like a bunch of bands. We created a bunch of bands yeah. and then there were all these other projects that we were getting because we had to pay rent. And, you know, so... And in, I mean, there to event, eventually, if I was in, he like Ban would come in, and if Ban was in, I would come in. So it was, it became a situation where we were constantly working with each other. Yeah. At that point, somehow I, I somehow like you know like somehow something. I mean, I don't know what happened. You know, Bala came back into my life, <laughs> and me and Bala we go way way back. Yeah. You know, like like my first sort of. I would say, like Robert like Bareface Liar, which is his band. Yeah. yeah, it was was one of my in was the beginning sort of serious bands. You know, like oh, I used to play in a lot of that. bands then, but but <laughs> Bareface Liar was like a bunch of serious individuals sitting in a room going, "Oh, I'm gonna make music." You know, <laughs> so so and that was my first experience of that. Right. So so post that, you know, like. And in that band, the only person I was really, really close to was Bala. Was Bala. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, for some weird reason, he gets married, he moves on with his life, does whatever. And then suddenly, <laughs> ek din iska call aata hai. Huh. Okay? And No, we, incorrect, incorrect. I met him at... <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, so there are many versions. Many versions. So, so, so now Bala like has... Such a, such a lovely love story. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Huh. No, so uh, a common friend of ours, oh, yeah, Harpreet. 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 Huh. And then we just started hanging out. What Singapore? No, no, no. I see. Habitat Center. Oh, okay. yeah. So yeah, basically, why are we not playing together anymore? And then exactly. you decided that you wanted to play together. Yeah. And uh, then you got Jagtinder to sing for you. Jagtinder came much later. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's another story. Yeah, that's like Jagtinder is a genre. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Nick initially met 
uh, to to make the first few songs for Knock Knock. Okay. Yeah. And while we met, that's when I met Ban also. Ban I've known since Donkey's years as mm. well, but also in the middle we had a long gap where I hadn't seen him. Or but tell me right. something, uh, uh, Ban, you you told me that Dastan uh, to you was something that needed to make a lot more sense as far as music was concerned. I mean, for both, both for both I mean, of you, for all three yeah. of us. Actually, uh, how comfortable were you uh, in the beginning? Uh, as I said already, just to um, put context to it, Dastan Live uh, uh, not just uh, uh, does its own music, but it also interprets uh, poems and uh, uh, revolution. Revolutionary words written by the likes of uh, 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 Pash and and Faiz Ahmed Faiz and Sahil Lutyanbi. How comfortable were you with this? Because um, language would probably have been a barrier because Urdu is not your language of currency, so to speak. No? Yeah. So I mean, even while playing in Dastan for a long <laughs> time, like I played these songs without actually knowing what they meant. Right. And um, honestly, like honest to God, I must have played like that for about a year and a half or something. <laughs> but uh, you know, once the CA protest came around, that's when it actually like hit me, and that's when it actually made sense to mm. me, and mm. I realized the weight of the words for the first time. Mm. And those also, uh, uh, sorry to just to uh, add to what Bala just said. I mean, for us, we initially we might not have understood the depth or the actual meaning of the poetry or the words that because it's not like not mm. our mother tongue or not a language that we are comfortable yeah. speaking sure. or conversing to bully sure. but we we knew that what we were making that needed something which was bigger than like the kind of music that each one of us we have been doing in our mm. uh, respective careers because yeah. Nick has been playing for the last 15-20 years I have sure. been playing for the last 15-20 years Bala has been playing for the last 15-20 years but what we realized with this was that it's not just the words or the poetry, it's the music, it's the overall impact while we were making it. And all all, all of this music was actually created in Bala's room. And that room yeah. has something which, it's still a room, it's a small room, but even sitting in that room when the three of us were jamming, we knew that this has to be sure. like something much, much bigger than what, what, yeah. Yeah, in and fact, every time we like go back to, to that room, yeah, something it's just you like that. Up. That uh, energy, energy comes energy back. Comes. Yeah, yeah, always. And I think what and Ban is saying, it's it's literally about the presentation. Like, mm. We, mm. so we wanted the presentation of the show to be something way more than what we're used to in mm. our in our normal performing lives. Yeah. Which is where the art rock collective bit comes yeah. in, because you also um, uh, collaborate with uh, with artists other than those yeah. uh, who are musicians. Yeah. So yeah. there's also a visual aspect to what you do as well, yeah. Yeah. which you pay attention to. Yeah. Uh, which we will come to a little later because it's it's an interesting thing that you talk about the weight of words mm. because um, you you felt that weight quite literally yeah. in Goa yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> where um, uh, where there was an FIR filed yes. against you guys yeah. um, for uh, for something that uh, uh, that surprisingly um, a Hindu uh, saint had written uh, yeah. Baba <laughs> exactly was um, it was uh, part of the uh, the Navnirman movement yeah. from which all these all uh, these people came leaders, up. They came yeah, over. yeah, and and this was <laughs> like these people knew, like they were, they like, were probably singing. Yeah, they were probably singing it or reciting it or or appreciating it or quoting it. You Absolutely. Know? And and no, a fun a fun fact I found out is that our dear leader was very very uh, taken by the words of Baba Nagarjuna when he was younger and yeah. when he was just starting out. Yeah, man, he was a I, big fan. I think, I, and, like, and then singing that in Goa led to actually a man taking offense and uh, filing an FIR against you, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, and then you were uh, detained. Yes. And then, of course, uh, there was a judgment that was in your favor as well, yeah. which also, in a way, showed you exactly what the weight of words could be, because that exactly. judgment uh, was a bit of a landmark, uh, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about absolute uh, that landmark. I mean, it's a it's a really well written judgment, I would say, and um, you know, it really like reinforced our faith in the judiciary and just the systems that are in place. Yeah, and the fact that they do work, you know, when because. Really, the case against us was so ridiculous on many grounds. And the fact that I liked about the judgment is the court pulled them up on each one of those mistakes that they made. And honestly, it was just uh, it was just the government flexing their political muscle to prove a point or to be a deterrent for people to do this in the future. 
so i'm glad that they failed on all those fronts <laughs> <laughs> but um, but has that affected the way you make music now has that has that led to you second guessing what you do has that led to you uh, thinking twice about uh, about what you put uh, out there in front of people for sure it it has Hmm? it has clearly we, but we it's not not be, in a uh, negative way we just have to be a lot positive way because about, i think yeah. i think we are we are now when we discuss things now it's a very like though like even when it comes to these discussions like all i can say is because i'm usually somewhat the sort of you know silent dude watching the one thing i am very good at doing is figuring out if people have changed or not okay and i can see i can i can definitely say people have Mm-hmm. but they have changed for good and mm-hmm. they have changed for good in a good way for example <clears throat> now nobody is trying to nobody is trying to make art now people are making art mm-hmm. and they are making like like in us in just in just in the three of us when it comes to music a lot has changed and when it comes to what we write and what we quote mm-hmm. a lot has changed mm-hmm. yet I personally think what we are quoting now has more impact mm-hmm. than what we did earlier which kind of got us in trouble and surprisingly I mean see that's another thing man see this goes to show how how stupid this whole situation is it's the situation hmm. you know hmm. because now look at it now you have to like like we also dissected our situation theek hai kya hua hmm. there was a lawyer theek hai who shall remain nameless hmm. he got offended hmm. he may have many reasons why he got offended that day hmm. may have had a fight with his wife hmm. who knows hmm. may have had fight with people mm-hmm. or may straight up would have not liked the band hmm. or what we were saying hmm. because we also on that day hmm. supported CA, uh, the protests that were happening specifically against the caa sure and we and all of these things it creates an image in in the eyes of the people who are watching this hmm. okay now in my opinion there were a lot of people there and i could see them because mad drums pe baja raha hu riser pe mujhe sab dikhta hai hmm. i saw people who didn't like it theek hai there were a lot they stood up hmm. and they did the most beautiful indian thing you can do which is walk away <laughs> yeah <laughs> sure sure it makes yeah. it, it makes sense it, it does make sense I they mean, didn't like it right moved away there were people who liked it came and sat down <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's but, man that's what we are about dude but that's and that's what, what art is about sure. so the situation here is ek bande ka dimag kharab ho gaya usne ye sari cheez apne pe le li uske baad uske piche aur log aa gaye jinhon laga ki ha bhai iske iske piche hum points collect kar sakte hain ye matlab balloon wali baat aa gayi aa gaye matlab wo aa gayi wo charra wala gun aa gaya chalo let's collect points point collect karne ki koshish kari gayi पॉइंट कलेक्ट नहीं हुए और बात अपने आप फेड हो गई फिर इवेंचुअली जब ये जुडिशरी पे बात पहुंची तो ऑब्वियसली जजेस देख रहे हैं कह रहे हैं कि क्या हो रहा है ये ये क्या है बट विच लीड्स मी टू दिस क्वेश्चन बिकॉज वी ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट द थॉट्स बिहाइंड द एक्शन यू नो वन थॉट इज ऑफकोर्स द परफॉर्मिंग थॉट द अदर इज द लिसनिंग पार्ट ऑफ इट यू नो एंड बोथ especially for the music that you you make uh, i think listening is also as important as expressing right have you seen a change in the kind of listenership that you have have you have you seen a change from where you started to now where you've come and the kind of music that you're doing what's the listenership scene for your music so mm. for me uh, frankly like nick said like and it's beautiful to actually be at the back and watch mm. what's happening mm. in front of mm. you for me also what has changed is the way people used to say listen to songs like mm. most bands when you listen to anywhere in the world they have songs mm. we have a show mm. like it's an hour long non stop performance mm. we don't stop between our songs we have interludes so when a song finishes it actually hasn't really finished sure. so it sure. will have an interlude going into the next next bit so yeah. there are parts there are interludes and that's something that we had decided mm. since day one that we'll not specifically make songs we'll we'll create a narrative mm. like a long format narrative what has happened is people have lost touch with long format anything any form of art sure. like what because because of you can call it social media because of uh, short attention span because of in shorts like news is being like yeah. consumed yeah. in 20 words everything mm. is condensed yeah everything oh. is condensed yeah. but somewhere that is where we decided consciously that we'll not do that 
will not be a part of that part to that we'll create a story which is an hour and a half long mm-hmm. and you have to engage with the entire thing like a play or you watch a movie you cannot like imagine imagine satak you're watching a movie and in the middle there's a break and then you start another movie and then in the middle there's another break and we go back to that movie and at the end of it you won't remember what was mm-hmm. what right to play devil's advocate uh, does this also um, uh, mean a little bit of indulgence on your part and and sort of oh, yeah. ignoring the fact oh, yeah. that there is <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but right. the idea is the idea is to maintain a balance See, the, the thing is we want nice one bala nice one. <laughs> well done bala that's a that's a good one uh, like applause <laughs> The mic has its opinions as well. (laughs) (laughs) But we are trying to create a show which is entertaining. Like I, like, and this is something that we, from the very beginning, we we were very clear of. Hmm. That it, it, okay, of course there will be indulgence, you Hmm. know. But it can't be, like, it will be for an audience and we are going to do this as a show to entertain a certain kind of audience. And that's the idea. Sure. So, there is that for sure. But there is also a little bit of that indulgence, for Hmm. sure. Because hmm. you can't really, I personally think art in general is a very, like, if you're doing art. <laughs> <laughs> As, opposed As opposed to sessions. As opposed to sessions. It is very <laughs> indulgent. But, uh, uh, Even uh, sessions are indulgent no, sometimes. but to add to that, sorry, uh, to add to that indulgence part, yes, it's indulgence. And also at the same time, we are trying to bring somewhere, we are trying to bring back what we lost as a society. Like, you know, we used to listen to albums. Like, if we talk about music, yeah. we would listen to albums, not like songs. Like, when there were no, there was no forward or fast forward or those buttons didn't exist. No, when there was no skip track. No there skip was no track, track. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, there yeah. was no skip track. We would listen to albums. Like, I heard, I remember listening to Black, say, for instance, Metallica. The entire album, I was sure. blown by it. Sure. I, to li- listen to Pearl Jam, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin. I mean, I, yeah, that yeah. changed my life. But on I think our life has also changed uh, with the advent of social media. I think what's happened is the the whole bite-sized tasting of things yeah. has taken over so much. But yeah. uh, you don't fear irrelevance because um, one, the social media marketing bit of it, the whole cacophony of uh, of so much art being created, the democratization of art is, is real now. Mm. Uh, putting your music out there and getting it heard. Is it, do you think, more difficult than it was when you started? See, the thing mm. is, like, I mean, our music, to be honest, when we created the show, it was never to be popular. We mm. already knew that people have certain preconceived notions about not just shows, but, you know, even the kind of content that's presented through that show. Yeah. So our idea was always that, you know, we'll, we're not making music just for ourselves but we're making it for those who will automatically get this message or those who feel a certain way about what's happening around them or they feel a certain way about social issues. So mainstream numbers was never our game anyway, even in the online world where still kind of come into grips with it. Because like Ban said earlier, our show is a long sort of story so here to fit on this online mold, we're having to cut that story into many smaller parts. So, but at the same time to do that, you know, we're looking at really interesting ways to do that. You know, how, mm. how can we push the envelope on this each time? And I think people really like appreciate that effort and, you know, our listenership, while it may not be huge numbers or something, you know, I feel like everyone who listens to our music and likes it really gets it. And they get what we're talking about. And even this Goa thing that we're talking about, right? Their intention was to kind of mitigate our impact. But instead, the reverse has happened. Like, it's given more credence to our message. Sure. Um, so, you know, like like they say, you know, no press is bad press. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> <laughs> so it is about expectation management in a way. But yeah. uh, you also go for scale. I mean, your productions, you actually pay a lot of attention to how it is done. There's specifics. Um, now you want to talk about the specifics of scale uh, in your uh, in your production value? So basically, uh, we have done about 32 shows so far Mm -hmm. and each of those shows has been like a certain kind of a new experience for us as well where we have done like a living room literally bare minimum acoustic show to a 
huge arena show to mapping the walls at at uh, India Habitat Center. Of course. So you know, <clears throat> when we talk about scale, what we feel is we have like as a show, we are ready to actually go from a small boat to a big cruise ship, mm. and we have the right kind of people like in the team who are like pushing their own. Like we are pushing, like we are musicians primarily. But we are pushing in even in music. We are trying to push that envelope constantly. Like our songs are not easy. Like there are lot lots of polyrhythms in it. There are two drummers, in fact, mm. and syncing the seven musicians on stage. Wow! Syncing mm. all of that together, two guitar players, mm. then Bala singing mm. and playing the guitar and making sure that every everything else is in sync. Mm. Like mm. you know, Subhanshu mm. is playing the guitar, doing harmonies. Nick is playing the drums, doing harmonies. There is another percussionist who sometimes also does live sound while playing the percussion. Sure. I mean, he has to. Sure. Because that's did, how. That's did, because that's, that's how. how it's that's how yeah. it is. Like that's how we have set it up. It, like, that's how it's crafted. You're yeah, 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 yeah. So sure. we did we did this uh, 360 show where we were actually not looking at each other. Mm. And for us as musicians, it was oh. a really challenging thing yeah. to do mm. because mm. you know. Normally we are used to like I'm used to look at Bala and Nick yeah, yeah. mm. for playing my bass, but here you have you know this setup mm. which we have only designed. I mean we only sure. make our own acts and <laughs> sure. like like sure. uh, 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 Abraham Lincoln said it like if you have to cut a tree you sharpen your axe for sixteen hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm. So, but in these times of uh, of people consuming music and people making music inside their living rooms and bedrooms respectively yeah. uh, uh going for scale and and still uh giving primacy to the community experience yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. because art when i i guess i can i can talk uh, i can say this for all of us that yeah. when we grew up art to us including music or theater yeah, yeah. whatever else it was a community experience and now it, totally. everything is sort of shrunk into yeah. Yeah. a very intimate kind of a, a, a kind of a space uh do you think do you see that as a challenge to uh, to what you do the fact that right now with the covid situation and uh, and with the way people are consuming music uh, or art um that your that your music might not uh, uh, you know reach where it is supposed to reach do you have ever no th- so i mean if you're talking about the pandemic specifically hmm. um we recognize the fact that you know we're not going to be able to play the shows that we want to hmm. or hmm. you know any kind of shows at all for that yeah. so then we decided that we'll take this time to kind of strengthen our online presence to release more music hmm. so hmm. we're still on that plan because you know things are still quite up in the air as far as live performances go even i'd say even the rest of this year sure so you know our plan is kind of to use that time to make more music release more music make better videos mm. so even those the thing is even with the videos where we're kind of emulating a community experience like mm. our last video kon batai yeah. so we crowd sourced that video sure and it was really cool because again like the thing is ban and me are very fortunate to be connected to the theater scene mm. quite closely because like both our partners are in theater right and even the people we chose to work with us on dastan are mostly from the theater field you know and the thing is like they treat community experiences very differently than the mm. people in the music scene do mm. Mm. so and i think that perspective was really important for us so even this kon batai video like you know we we had no idea what to expect and people really exceeded our expectations sure, like and sure. Yeah, but like, tell me yeah. about uh, about artistic egos here. Let's talk about gossip. <laughs> It's uh, um, you know theater theater artists musicians trying to make a difference. <laughs> It's always a fight. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so like sorry. No no. I was I was just asking about reconciliation or otherwise. <laughs> so the best part is that it's the three of us. And the extended community. So if Bala and I we fight, hmm. so then Nick becomes our sort of mediator. I'm the guy in the middle. Then. If Nick and Bala fight, then I become the mediator. <laughs> Nick, the Nick and Bala never fight, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, never. This, uh, yeah. Now uh, before this, uh, he generates into to to my way into not that kind yeah. of interview. <laughs> good, part, good part is that we we have. I mean, and we are here by choice. We are hmm. not here because Bala is. Paying me, or I'm getting making a lot of money doing yeah, this sure. stuff. We are here by choice, and we all want to do this. 
Like, yeah. And these egos will always be there. You're absolutely right. Like artistic egos, and they're important. I feel. Yeah, they're they extremely important. important. They're extremely because that important. that that's actually what really like makes the unit. Yeah. Like the character of the unit comes out because of that. Like for example, and this is a very simple example. Hmm. Like fr- from like just my point of hmm. view. Hmm. Okay. Let's say you're doing a shadi gig. Hmm. Just an example. Hmm. What happens? You have to land up at a certain time. <laughs> you land up at a certain time. Okay. And the sound engineer is not there. <laughs> Or the sound engineer is there. And you are not there. Ye asli production ki kahaniya. Asli production ka aaniya. Haan, so haan. Or, hota kya hai ki sound check hota hai. Haan. Sab loog kehta hai, aray wah, badiya, ajee badiya, aray badiya, badiya, badiya. Thik hai? Haan. Gig hota hai, haan. gig khatam hota hai. Haan. Paise nahi milte hai, to us din ki baat hoti hai. Nahi to kabhi baat nahi hoti hai. <laughs> hai na? Now, <laughs> now, Now let me compare that to a Dastan ka gig day. Huh. Okay. Dastan ka gig day will start with everyone being a little stressed. Like okay. actually a little more stressed <laughs> than usual. I can you see know? you shifting in your seat. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah, can yeah. imagine yeah, yeah. how even the thought affects you. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Huh. So and it's a situation where everyone is just like sort of fighting with time. Because everyone wants to be on time. But most probably. most people will actually not land up on time because there's a lot of things that's happening <laughs> that day theek hai but once we apni baat kar rahe this is actually a <laughs> mea culpa essentially <laughs> just, just for people to know that uh, nikhil vasudevan is called the late mr vasudevan because always late to every gig so nahi nahi that's a great excuse nahi but dastan ke samay mai usually time pe aata hu baat ye hai mai yahi to kehna chahta hu to hota kya hai ki usme sab log aate hain the moment the moment people land up ha there is a certain sense of okay you have to get this stuff done hmm. Hmm. it's never a situation where people are like cribbing ki bhai ye nahi aaya wo nahi aaya it's hmm. just like pahunche hain chalo kaam karte hain hmm. and we have to get this done x y z hmm. we have to get it done hmm. and whatever that needs to be well done will get done <laughs> an hour later then when it should have been done sure yeah. but it gets done and once it gets done people just go into a space everyone goes into a mental space where they are actually sort of shielding themselves from any outside opinion rather i mean they'll engage on a very surface level mm. you know mm. but then everyone goes backstage and this is everyone including the light people mm. people who like like tech quartet is with us sure. when we are when they're doing it everyone is with us everyone is in that room and like chances are that they may even be some people crying which has happened hmm. yeah. i will not take the name of the person because he is an incredibly good musician hmm. Hmm. now you know it's a musician okay i'm not going to say any more <laughs> but there is a certain kind of en- environment at that time where where think you know it feels like okay dude Okay, I don't know if I'm ready, but I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. Mm. Everyone is psyching themselves up, mm. and then there is a like a very like two minute silence that we always observe. Post that, there is a gig. We don't care if anyone gets paid. Everyone talks about that gig. Sure. That's the difference. So, so for me, like just that goes to show how how important like certain like. selection of human beings in a room who are trying to do something is sure. because it all comes down to that at the team work arts podcast we are trying to literally see what goes on behind the scenes and i think we've rarely had a verbal picture that was drawn as beautifully as you do nice, a verbal man. picture so yeah that's uh, dude coming from you much. that's the, <laughs> yeah okay that's uh, that's pretty much i mean you can you can visualize the backstage of a gig and, wow. and that's how it happens that's how music is supposed to happen and uh, now there's yeah. a now there's a visual uh, now there's a verbal picture to uh, to how it happens as well uh, nice. Dastan live is is who we are listening to there's also this um, uh, this question of uh, meaning now um, there's lots of meaning and layers to uh, uh, to the to the songs that you do ye galiyon ke awara bekar kutte agar kisi ko keh diya to unko ye samajh nahi aayega ki faiz sahab ne usko awam ke bare mein likha tha that it was it was about the polity actually yeah yeah uh, there's lots of meanings to what you're doing and uh, unfortunately uh, it seems that 
the meanings that are supposed to be taken out are being ignored and then other meanings are being attributed to it. Yeah. Mm. So the meaning is there. It's yeah. just the direction of the meaning seems to be misdirected in that way. Uh, which which sometimes affects the way people absorb your music as well. Yeah. So is there a temptation to dumb down what you're doing to sort of make it a little more accessible because uh, that would probably be low hanging fruit, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And uh, I don't think the uh, dumbing down is the word, but like, uh, like you earlier asked, like are we second guessing mm. what we are doing now? <coughs> what we are actually doing now is actually creating, like that's what art is all about. That's what we are talking about. Art is about creating those subtexts and those metaphors. Mm. Mm. We will never, even if we write anything today, we always make sure that there's a certain benchmark to it. Be it writing music, be it writing poetry, be it, write, be it even the visuals. Like we start, like Nick said, you know, we, we literally take every show as seriously as we are performing at a Wembley Stadium. It doesn't matter whether mm. it's a living mm. room mm. or a Wembley yeah. Stadium or a, a Royal Court Theatre. It doesn't matter. Right. Like for us, yeah. each and every show is... And we do that huddle. That huddle is the most important thing because that's what brings that energy mm. for the show. Mm. And it, then it doesn't matter where we are. Mm. Like we are performed in communities in an open space in front of Mede Cafe for sure. the uh, uh, Shadipur Dibo community. Like there were people out there. We had no amps, nothing. We did a performance. Sure. Sure. We did a performance at a, at a place which had like thousand lights and the amp that you want and everything. But our effort for each... Each of mm. those has been the same. Yeah, sure. And also, like to add to that, the the production quality that what uh, Nick was talking about and what we are all discussing. The first, uh, the first launch gigs that we did, we did three launch gigs at Shed Nine. Before that, we did a ten day residency. Now, in music, this is unheard of. Mm. Theater, mm. theater scene does this, like mm. theater, dance, or other visual arts. You will do a residency mm. that goes. Like, you know, uh, that sort of the output is an exhibition or whatever. Sure. Like it's a sure. presentation. Sure. We did that residency where we called like Bala's partner Kriti did a bunch of workshops mm. with us. Yeah. We figured out our entire show there. Like we would, like the lighting designer TQ, like Ankit Pandey and Abhinav uh, Khetar Bal who are not here today. Mm. They were totally like taking carton boxes and figuring out how to mm. create mm. like DIY. Yeah, yeah. And they do that everywhere. Of, like I they're mean, like, they're hardcore when so, it comes to that, yeah. they do. Is uh, so sorry. It's the it's so, the ethos. Yeah. It's that ethos of a show, like producing a show for for a for a collective like this, and that is what is exciting. Like every time we go into a show, we feel like okay, you know, like even we might not know what it's going to be like or what it's going to look like, but that ethos, that work ethos, and that comes back to our again the the thing that why we have chosen to keep it this way. Like, like, you know, LPs are coming back, like 16 and sure. film is coming back. Like, why? Because these are, and it's hard to, you know, like, uh, uh, press an LP. Like, because, sure. like, in today's day and age, yeah, it is yeah. hard. It's, back it's, in the, it's, day, back it in the day also, it was very so hard. So then, you know? all things considered, the, the fact that there's a, there's a production value involved, the yeah. fact that you, you want desperately, in a sense, to make the music mean something. Yeah. Uh, in the current scenario and in the near future, uh, where do you see your music going? Honestly, like our our music will go wherever the kind of overarching environment goes because you know, like our music was always a response to current events and the current mood in the country. So I think yeah. like for us to be able to chart it in the future is kind of it depends on you know. Politically, where does this country go? Socially, what are the issues that are coming up, you know? But honestly, like, they don't change that much over a period of time in India. Mm -hmm. So, I think our music will always address these certain things like social evils, social issues, political issues. And all we want to do is kind of, you know, like, maybe we just want to grow our community. So, sure. so there are many mm. different ways to do that, and that those are the things we keep sort of. So you see, hope, do you sometimes have to squint? But there, is there that golden ray of uh, sunshine that you see over the horizon? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, always. otherwise we wouldn't have got. Yeah, yeah. Here. We wouldn't <laughs> like have even my, gotten here. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like, मेरा तो life ही उसी में बीतता है. Like it's no, just uh, hope. <laughs> also in terms of hope, I would like to share one story which actually is something that we live for. It's a, it's a story of one person who, was, who is still a part of our collective. 
and uh, like say a couple of years back this person was of a certain ideology like political ideology mm. and through like post being with us and through the events that has happened around us in the country i mean this person has changed and we have seen that change and today that this person understands what we are doing in a much better way in a much nuanced way and i should not even talk about anyone else i should talk about myself i think we individually like i have changed hmm. like what i was say in 2000 even in 2018 19 hmm. i am a changed person every day i am changing i'm learning hmm. new things hmm. and i'm uh, imbibing new things i'm learning so so that's the power of art hmm. and music is something which we all believe reaches like it cuts through hmm. it hmm. cuts through versus us you know i don't know like just going there and doing making sure. a speech sure. i think hmm. I think music really cuts through, and it. Yeah. It, so if you you take a like you look at a song like We Shall Overcome. Of course. You know it's an anthem. Of course. And it has been translated across the world in I don't know how many languages. As. Uh, and when was it? Do you know who who started no. that song? No. Do we know? No. That's it. So that's the power of you sure. know words, and that's the power of music. That's that is what keeps it immortal, makes it immortal. As Faiz Saab said, "Lambi hai ghum ki sham, lekin sham hi to hai." but uh, yeah we um, we look to the horizon and we look uh, with hope to the horizon and uh, the soundtrack of that hope seems to be coming from dastan live uh, i hope nice. uh, you enjoyed yourselves uh, ban uh, bala and nick uh, thank you very much as usual it's uh, thank, it's thank you thank you uh, yeah, it's, it's a pleasure it, it's been absolutely wonderful is there anywhere uh, people can find your music online uh, if they if they uh, want to so uh, they can find us on facebook um, and it is they can just search for dastan live that's mm. probably easier mm-hmm. but otherwise the official address is dastan is alive <laughs> on, on facebook on instagram, on instagram yeah. is at dastan live they can find us and we're quite regular with instagram yeah. there's some music like we have just released like uh, kon bataye and it's available on apple music spotify yeah what have the, you yeah all the all the online platforms so just search for dastan live and uh, the music shall come alive <laughs> <laughs> uh, give yourselves the chance to listen because uh, listening is becoming a, a bit of a thing that's coming at a premium nowadays so listen listen carefully that's important we hope uh, you've enjoyed uh, what you've uh, listened to on the teamwork arts podcast uh, uh, what's coming up next ah you'll just have to stay tuned for that won't you thank you for listening this ladies and gentlemen is the teamwork arts podcast